Welcome to the 10 Minute Treasure. My name is Jeff Pospisil. And in this video, I'm going to talk about alternative investments for churches. So I know in the past I've talked about investing in mutual funds and investing in the market and how that's a great long term investment. Well, the other day I got a phone call from a friend of mine who happens to pastor a church. And he mentioned a different type of investment, and I just want to share that with you and uh, let you think about it. So what was my friend trying to pitch me on for an idea? Was it crypto? I mean, that's got to be cheap right now. Uh, NFT, I don't even know if that's still around. I, I, I still don't understand what it is all the way. Precious metals, that seems to be a hot thing at the moment. Maybe it's real estate. So it wasn't any of those like you're thinking. It was a completely different type of investment. And here's what it was. So my friend was uh, running the idea past me that his church really needs to add a couple of staff people. And as we talked it over, it, this sounded a lot more like an investment because the church has been growing, but it's in danger of plateauing, and it's in a growing part of South Dakota, so there's a lot of good opportunity to grow, but you add staff, and it's going to make the budget really tight. You know, you're going to be lucky to be able to pay all your expenses in full, but the thought is you add staff in order to hopefully continue growing the church, that you'll reach more people, more people will give, and that's the idea. We're not adding staff to maintain. We're adding staff to grow. And that to me sounds like an investment so that in a year or two years from now, our income in the church should be up. And again, I know that's not the main reason you're doing that, but um, they really do feel called to, to grow their church and to reach more and more people. So anyway, that's a specific kind of investment that some churches need to uh, think about. But here are some much cheaper investments because adding staff can be expensive and it's a long-term commitment. But the, here are a couple of other alternative investments that your church can make and it'll be fairly cheap, but it could make a huge difference. So my first recommendation, and this is going to cost only two to four hundred dollars, would be to invest in a book study for your church board. So invest in a book study for your church board. What I've seen is that most often the most successful churches, whatever their context is and whatever that measure of success is, their board has learned together. They've gone through a book together. And so here's three books. I'll put links in the description that I th that I've seen work. Uh, Sticky Church, Lasting Impact, and Canoeing the Mountains. Great books. But what it does is, is when you learn together, that does something for the dynamic of your team. And it also paints a picture of what you think your church should be or, or could be in the future. And what that ends up doing, that clarity ends up being bringing about some measure of success. So chances are by spending this two to $400, you're going to grow your church, um, whether that's deeper or whether that's more people or whatever else it means, you're going to grow your church if you go ahead and invest in this. The second recommendation is that you hire a coach for your pastor. Hire a coach for your pastor. And again, this is going to cost something. Yeah, but and it's going to be more expensive than just a book. It'll be like one, two hundred dollars, maybe at the low end per month for a coach for your pastor. And one of the greatest experiences I had was with the Practical Church Leadership uh, Program, and that's the only time I've had coaching, and it was it, it was invaluable. Um, I'm going to put a link to that program because if you're if you haven't done that yet, uh, that's a way to have. So that coaching subsidized and give your pastor a taste of what good coaching is like because they are excellent. Um, so here, a lot of times if your pastor is anything like me, they don't want to spend extra money and they think, well, if I read extra books or if I listen to the right podcast, I can see where I need to improve and I can coach myself. Well, you really can't. 
you really do, uh, you really will benefit from having a coach. And if the pastor is healthier and improving, that is going to also help to improve the church's health and effectiveness as well. So I'm just going to lay that out there. I think this would be a good investment if you want your church to be more successful, invest in coaching in your pastor. The last recommendation, and this is not going to cost you anything up front besides like relational and emotional costs, but it, it's to kill something. That there's probably a ministry or something in your church that is just draining uh, money and energy. And I put up the, the picture of an organ in the crosshairs because for some churches, it is that organ. I'm not saying every church has to get rid of their organ, but some of you probably got to get rid of your organ. Um, I just remember there was this one church that they were paying something like $6,000 a year for their organist and, and their organist was getting older and they didn't know if they could replace it. And the one service that the organist played at was in declining anyway. <laughs> and I just thought to myself, and I said it out loud, actually, I said, you're paying $6,000 a year to drive away the young people. Anyway, that's how I looked at it. Um, so. But the and, and again, for your church, it might not be the organ, but is there something that you need to let go of that is that has served its purpose, but it's no longer offering the same return on the amount of energy and money that's going into it? You probably don't need to double down and reinvest in it. You probably just need to kill it. So that's that's my third recommendation is, is there something that you can kill that is just draining for you and your church. All right, that brings us to the end. I'm gonna put a bunch of links in the description for those books. Also to the, the Practical Church Leadership Program through Dakota Wesleyan. Again, that's a good place to get a taste of coaching. And uh, they may even be, be able to hook you up with a coaching. If, even if you don't take the program, they might have people that are open to doing that on the side. We'll see. Anyway, until next time, stay warm. God bless.